Okay, before I start this video, let me be the first to tell you that sound glitches are really annoying on computers. In fact, they're probably the most annoying glitches I've ever had. So, this is the first test footage you're seeing of this game. I tried to play it for the first time, and there's no sound at all. I, I later managed to fix this issue by taking the game out of full screen. For some reason, in full screen, it refuses to send the sound that's coming out of the game through the HDMI cable and through the TV speakers. Only when the laptop is unplugged from the TV can I get sound on full screen. So I actually have to go to the options menu under display and take it out of full screen just to get sound. That being said, I'm going to try out all the tutorials right now with sound, thankfully. Not sure why you have to take it out of full screen just to get sound, but whatever, I guess, as long as it's working. Now, as it turns out, the Class 43 is one of my favorite diesel electric locomotives in existence. So I was really excited that it was made available in this game. In fact, it's the very reason I bought this game in the first place. Because CSX is great and all, but it's pretty much available anywhere. <laughs> my favorite Class 43 is the Great Northeastern one, mainly because I really like the logo on those train cars. Especially on the passenger cars. So, let's get right to it. Okay, this is an interesting disclaimer that appears before you play the game to remind you that this is a game and it's not to be taken seriously. Specifically, it says, Train Sim World is designed to give you the freedom to enjoy your passion from the safety and comfort of your own home. The real railway can be a dangerous place and you should never attempt to replicate or copy the activities you see in Train Sim World in the real railway. For your own safety, always follow advice given by railway staff and observe signs and instructions provided at all times. This is the Class 43 High Speed Train in Great Western Railway livery. Great work on being accepted as a driver for GWR. Today you're going to learn how to take control of this iconic train, get it moving, and then bring it to a stop. Start by climbing aboard the locomotive. Enter through the cab door in front of you. I find it pretty cool that they made this stairway to make it easier for you to enter the locomotive because here in America you usually have to climb a ladder to get to the cab on locomotives like this.
Set the reverser handle into the neutral position. That alarm is the AWS self-test system. You will need to acknowledge this before continuing. Press the AWS reset button. You need to charge the brakes before we start the engine to ensure the train does not roll back. Set the train brakes to full service. to get a little more complicated from here, but we'll take it step by step. Set the headlights to day headlamp and markers. Put the train in forwards so we're ready to get moving. Using the reverser again, set the handle into forward. Setting the train brakes to running, they will start to release. Now apply some power and get this train moving. Ease the throttle handle into notch one.
Great Western Railway livery. This unit is used up and down the Great Western Main Line, providing stopping services to thousands of commuters each week. Today, you're going to learn how to take control of this unit, start it up, get it moving, and then bring it to a stop. Start by climbing aboard the unit. Enter through the cab door in front of you. In America, we say livery. In Britain, you say livery, apparently. Take a look around, and when you're ready, have a seat in the driver's chair. It always confuses me when a throttle and brake are the same lever. Okay, I can't hear the engine at all, so how do I know if I've started it or not? I don't... I, I, I know I pushed the button, but I don't hear anything at all. Okay, I think there might be something wrong with the tutorial. I've had this issue a lot of times in video games where they'll say something like, press triangle to block the attack, and then I press triangle, and it doesn't work, and then it just keeps telling me to press triangle to block the attack, and I keep pressing it, but nothing happens, so I end up not being able to finish the tutorial. This usually happens to me in fighting games. So then I'm like, okay, forget the tutorial, I'm just gonna press every button until something works.
Class 66 diesel locomotive, nicknamed Shed because of how it looks. This locomotive used to haul aggregates up and down the Great Western Main Line. Today, you're going to learn how to take control of this powerful freight locomotive. Start it up, get it moving, and then bring it to a stop. Start by climbing aboard the locomotive. Enter through the cab door in front of you. Um, how do you climb the ladder? Oh, apparently it's the E button. <laughs> Oh, it's just like on an American cab, only the controls are on the opposite side. Set the engine run switch, generator filled switch, and the control and fuel pump switch all to on. Here you go. Use the engine start button on the desk, then wait for the engine to get running and set the isolation switch to run. charging so a full application is needed this time hold the auto brake handle in the apply position until the brake pipe control needle is at three it looks as though the brakes are working as they should all you need to do now is fully release the brakes again so we can get moving Time to get moving. Turn the headlights and marker lights on. Put the train in forwards so we're ready to get moving. Using the reverser, set the handle into forward. Now you need to release the last of the brakes, the parking brake. Nearly there. Now apply some power and get this train moving. Ease the throttle handle into notch one. I think this is fast enough for now. To maintain our current speed, set the throttle handle back to idle. That's it. Let's bring the train to a gradual stop. Using the auto brake handle in the apply position again, get the brake pipe control needle in front of you to around four to apply a gentle application, and then let the brakes do the rest. Thank you. 
Okay, one thing I like better about this game is it runs more smoothly even with high details. Because on Trains A New Era, if I put the same train on the track and had it run past the camera at top speed, it always freezes for a really long time when the middle of the train gets to the camera. And so far there's been nothing I could do to stop it. In fact, that's one thing that gets on my nerves a lot when playing this game, how high detailed trains and high detailed scenery basically turn the game into a slideshow. Sometimes I can barely move the camera, and the really annoying thing is when I can't get the drivers to blow their horns correctly. And this other glitch that I, that that appears in some videos I've made in the past, like the German railroad crossing video, where the um the driver keeps blowing his horn continuously because the game keeps skipping. I can't get them to stop doing that. I just wish the guys that made the trains simulation games like Trains New Era could finally figure out how to get the game to run smoothly even with high detail and stop having it skip all the time. The railroad crossings are particularly annoying because sometimes the bells stop ringing when the game skips and sometimes they just keep skipping and repeating. Uh, it, it's horrible. It's just a mess. I think I might have forgotten the procedure for starting this train. <laughs> Actually, I think the engine's already running. I just had to remember how to unlock the reverser. <laughs>
Wait, what? Signal pass at danger? Where, where was the signal at? You know, here in America, missing a red light has been the cause of a lot of train crashes lately. And the leading cause appears to be the driver falling asleep at the controls. And it is close to the time I usually go to bed at the time I'm filming this, so maybe that's how I missed the signal. But either way, I did not see a signal on that track, let alone a red signal. I'm guessing it was a dwarf signal, and that's why I didn't see it. I was looking up. Should have been looking down. After re-watching this scenery, though, after re-watching this video, after I'm uh, woken up, I do see the signal that I missed, though. So, now I know where I made my mistake. Later, I'll fix that.